The aims of our research is to develop a, an effective treatment for a muscle disease called Duchenne muscular dystrophy, which is a tragic muscle wasting disease where boys go into a wheelchair at about the age of 12 and die in their 20s. Well, Henry Jail, of course, is famous for uh, giving us all the information about chemical transmission in the nervous system. And of course, muscle functions by getting an impulse from a, a signal uh, from the nerve. So the connection between my research and that of Henry Dale is that he told us about neurotransmission. We're concerned with how muscle functions as a consequence of the sort of signals at the synapse that Henry Dale discovered. So my area of research uh, started with identifying what was wrong in these patients. Now we know what's missing. We are now trying to find a way of replacing the missing protein. Your muscles are like this, where you, you, know, you stretch them, you contract them, and something has to make those muscle fibers line up each time. And if you've got dystrophin, which is the name of the protein that's missing, not there, then they don't align properly and you get muscle breakdown. And so what we've done is develop a method of compensating for that in the hope that we might be able to hold the muscle together better. I was uh, originally a chemist and I discovered genetics after reading a paper in the early 1980s and it was clear that genetics was going to make a big change to our interpretation, our ability to look at human disease and that's when I joined and then I met a DMD patient and I realized that potentially we could identify what was wrong in these patients and perhaps in the future, that's 30 years ago, we might be able to develop a treatment. So it's the patient groups and the patients themselves that made me realize that we might be able to do something. I think the most exciting discovery we made on a personal front was that there was a, a protein that existed in muscle cells which could compensate for the lack of the missing protein and that gives us an opportunity to treat the disease. I think the most illuminating aspect of the research is that it's changing all our time. The ability for us to make those breakthroughs because of the technology that don't come from my lab but come from other labs, we're able to apply and, and make the research go faster. And not only can we make the research go faster, we can ask questions that we couldn't have asked 10 years ago. And that's just amazing. The microscopes are better, we can see what's happening. There. We can sequence people's DNA, we can understand how, why that patient is different from that patient. It's incredible. MRC has helped my research enormously by giving me tranches of five-year funding. And it's that longer-term funding that's made a huge difference. You can take risks, you can have new ideas. They give you a tranche of money at the beginning and sell you to go away and come back in five years with a progress report, that's hugely enabling because there's not all this accountability going on in between which stops you from ever having a novel idea. The future is amazing because five years ago I used to stand up at patient group meetings and say, and to the families, and say, well, you might have a cure in 10 years. I now stand up and say, well, you'll have at least one effective treatment, may or may not be us, but you'll have one. Uh, within the next five. I, for example, am a co-founder of a biotechnology company specifically focused on trying to develop a treatment for DMD. And we've already got a drug that has been through phase one very successfully. That's a safety trial. And now we're taking it into DMD patients to ask the question, does it work? And fingers crossed, we hope that it will. I think there's a real hope now that many of these patients will have a much better quality of life than they've ever been able to dream of before.